in. Now, a great way to finish off your cake is to cover your cake board in fondant, and this can really tie your cake board into the rest of your cake. Now, a little while ago, I created a tutorial showing how to cover your cake board in fondant, how to make your cake board look like wood, and also how to make it look like stone. Now, I can't believe that this video was actually two years ago, so I thought it was about time I added to the collection. So in this week's video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can cover your cake balls to look like marble, how you can cover them to look like metal, and also how you can cover your cake boards to look like grass. Now, if you haven't seen the first video, I will link this in the description below. So let's get started. The board that I'm going to be using throughout this video is a drum board. So these are widely used in the UK and they are a really sturdy board. So this one measures 12 inches across and it just has a height of around a centimeter. Now you usually get this silver metallic finish. So by covering it with a fondant, you really tie it in to be part of your cake. Now the first technique I'm going to do is how to make your board look look like marble. But some of the basic tools that you're going to need is first of all a rolling pin, also a paddle smoother just for smoothing down your fondant, also a pizza cutter just for trimming off around the edge. And lastly just some water to allow that fondant to stick to your board. So in order to create the marble effect, first of all, I've got my fondant. Now I'm using 465 grams of this white fondant, and that's gonna be enough for me to cover my 12 inch board. Rolling my fondant to a height of around two to three millimeters. So you want it slightly thinner on your board than you would roll fondant in order to cover your cake. Now, everyone always asks me, what fondant are you using? So for this video, I'm gonna be using the Renshaw Ready to Roll Icing, or also known as fondant. Now, in some of my other videos, you might have just seen me add food gel directly onto your fondant, which you can definitely do. I've just colored two small balls of fondant in a light gray, just using some of the color splash black. And the reason for doing this is I wanna keep quite a lot of white in my marble. So I'm just gonna roll out some of my fondant into some thinner strips, varying in size, and just push those into that main white fondant. Now, one great thing about all the techniques that I'm gonna run through in today's video is I'm using them to cover my board, but you can also use these same techniques to cover your cakes. Now all I'm gonna do is start to combine these colors. So I'm just gonna start to knead them through. We want those gray shades to start to disperse through that white and as we go, we can add a little bit more of that darker gray. Now with marble, you wanna stop before all of those colors are combined. So when you can still see some of the white, some of the light gray and some of that slightly darker gray coming through, you know it's time to roll it out. Another thing is when you're rolling out fondant in order to cover your cake, usually you would push it all into a ball to get a nice smooth surface. Now on the back where we've been pulling that fondant over, we've got all of these areas where this fondant is joining together. And this is where I'm gonna roll the marble so that we get slight lines. So I'm gonna pop down a small amount of corn flour on my work surface. And I like to use corn flour as I find this doesn't dry out the fondant like icing sugar does. So as you can see, as we start to roll it, we're getting this marble effect running through. And you wanna keep rotating that fondant so that we're rolling it out as close to a circle as possible. Now, one thing I do love about marble is you have two different options. So we've got this top side and we can see this marble coming through. Through, but it's always worth checking the back just to see which surface you prefer. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water, cover the surface of my board, paying close attention to the edge, and then gonna lift that fondant up and drape it over my board before using my smoothing paddle over the top. I can then take my pizza cutter and just run around the edge, taking off that excess. Sometimes if you haven't gone really close to the edge with the water, that fondant can spring back. So you just wanna use 
your paddle smoother. The last thing you want to do to finish off your board is just cover that silver edge. So to do this, I'm going to use some ribbon. I've then got some double-sided tape and this is the double-sided tape that I always use and I will put a link to this in the description below. First piece, I'm going to stick that ribbon onto the side. I can then pop that double-sided tape on the other end, pull that tight and stick that down. So there we have our first board and that's just showing you how you can make your board look like it's made of marble. Now for different textures you can get moulds which you can put into your fondant to create the effect but sometimes you might not want to buy a mould just in order to cover one board. So I'm going to be showing you how you can create a diamond metal sheet effect with no mould. So first of all I'm going to take some of my fondant. Now I've got a little bit more than 465 grams as I will be needing a little bit extra to create the pattern. So I'm going to start by using some black gel colour and this is just the black by Colour Splash and just colouring my fondant so I get a light grey colour and that colour will start to disperse and unlike the first board that we covered you just want to keep going until you've got a nice solid colour and then going to roll this out until it's large enough to cover my board before popping on some water as I did before, placing on that fondant before smoothing it down and cutting off any excess with my pizza cutter. Okay so I'm actually going to put the board to one side and use the offcuts to create the diamond pattern. So I'm rolling out some of that leftover fondant and you want it around one to two millimeters in thickness. You then want something round to use as a circle cutter. So this is just the end of my 2D piping tip. So it's just under an inch in diameter. And I'm gonna start by cutting out loads of little circles. Now I'm going to use my piping tip just on the edge just to cut out a diamond shape. Now if you're happy with the size of that diamond, in order to make all of my diamonds the same size, I want to know where I need to cut. So I'm going to use an edible pen and on the sides where it intersects that fondant, I'm just going to draw a little mark. I can then line up those marks. So I'm going to do that for all of my circles and you're going to need quite a lot of diamonds. Now one thing to think about, in this video I'm going to be covering the whole board just so you can see, but if you're placing a cake in the centre you don't actually need to add these diamonds. So you could use the bottom of the cake tin that you've used to bake your cake in, or if you've got an acrylic disc or a ganache plate the same size as your cake, you can place that in the centre. Just use a dressing tool to draw around the edge. You then know that you don't actually have to put the pattern in the center of your board as this is going to be covered with your cake. Now to stick my little diamonds on I've just got some edible glue and a small paintbrush so I'm going to take one of those diamond shapes. Now it doesn't matter where on your board you start so I'm going to place my first one here and to get the pattern you want to add the next one horizontally so just leaving a slight gap so we've got one vertical one and one horizontal one. I'm then going to continue this pattern and go in a straight line right the way across my board. So I'm just leaving around half a centimetre between each one. Now I want to do exactly the same above and below that line, just shift it across slightly. So where we've got a horizontal one, I'm going to put the vertical one directly underneath. And if you find that you're not going in a straight line. You could always place a ruler or a piece of paper on top and just use this as a guide. Now at the side, if I've got any overhanging, I'm just gonna use my craft knife to take that off. So you can see we're starting to get that pattern. So I'm gonna continue across the whole of my board
Now, as you go, you might have to cut out some more diamond shapes depending on the size of your board. But I'm just continuing on following that pattern of one horizontal and one vertical, and then just offsetting those underneath. So we have the diamond pattern. The next thing to do is make this look like it's made of metal. To do this, I'm gonna be using some luster dusts. So you want something with a shine to it. So I've got a light silver, and this one is by Sweet Sticks. I've also got a satin silver, and this one is by Sugar Flare. I've got a metallic luster dust in a charcoal. And if you wanted to give it a bit more of a grungy feel and make it look like it's got rust on there you could also use something like this dark rose luster dust by sweet sticks now I'm going to start with the satin silver and I'm actually going to add a small amount of dipping solution or rejuvenating spirit to this as I find that this makes the shine a lot deeper than if you were just using luster dust on its own. So I'm going to cover the entire board with that satin silver edible paint and I do actually have another video showing six different things that you can mix with luster dust to create an edible paint if you didn't want to use a dipping solution. And the reason for colouring my fondant in a grey to start with was to give me a base colour so that I don't have to add as much luster dust. Now with that dipping solution the paint is drying quite quickly. Now you can see brush marks and you can just go in with your large fluffy brush and just buff that out. And this is going to get rid of those brush marks and also really make it shine. So that's just using the satin. Now I've got some of the light silver and I'm going to go in just brushing this in different areas so it looks like a bit of light is hitting that board. And again the same with the charcoal just to create a little bit of shadow. And so you might want to add the darker charcoal around the edge. So you're just building that colour up until you're happy with how it's looking. It just looks like the light is hitting our board and really making it look like a sheet of metal. For this one, I've then got this shimmery silver ribbon and I'm gonna attach this in exactly the same way. So just using double-sided tape. So there we've got our cake board that looks like a sheet of metal. For our third cake board, I'm gonna show you how to make grass. So I've got some of my white fondant and I'm gonna start by coloring this in a green color. Now I'm using some of the foliage green extra by Sugar Flare. I'm gonna roll this out, add it onto my board and trim off the excess. We want to make this look like blades of grass. So I've got a 1M piping tip. As you can see, we've just got these points coming up. Now I'm gonna start at one side of the board so that I can work my way across so that I'm not gonna be pushing the palm of my hand into what I've already created. Popping it on and just pulling it one way and then the other. So it's just going in different directions just ripping up that fondant. Now, don't forget, just like the metal, you only need to do the part that is gonna be poking out of your cake. But I'm gonna go in and do the whole board. You just wanna make sure that you're not pushing deep enough that you can see the silver underneath. And you wanna do this as quickly as you can after covering your board, as you don't want that fondant to dry out. Now, if you do have two piping nozzles available, then this is really gonna speed up how long it takes. Now, to make this look a little bit more realistic, we wanna add some different shades of green. So I've got some foliage green, some apple green, some woodland green, and a little bit of cream for the little bits of dead grass you have mixed in. Now, these are actually edible tints. So instead of the luster dust that we used for the metal, these are matte, and these ones are by Sugar Flare. And I can go in with my fluffy brush, just building up that green on. I'm adding some of the lighter green, mixing in some of the darker green, just to give us 
some different shades. We just want to try and be nice and gentle so we're not flattening down all of that fondant. And I'm just finishing off the board with a green ribbon. So there we've got your board covered in grass. So here we have the finished three different themes of cake board. Please do let me know in the comments below, is there any other themes of cake board you would like to see how to make? I really hope you've enjoyed this video and will be able to use some of these techniques on your own cake boards. If you have enjoyed the video, as always, don't forget to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already, then don't forget to subscribe to the Cakes Fun and YouTube channel. You can also hit that notification bell next to the subscribe subscribe button and this will just alert you every time we upload a new video. Now I will put a list of all the tools that I've used throughout today's video in the description below so you can find them there. So until next time, bye!